pandemonium outside of Joe Dusun's house as YouTubers and others flock to Ansan in order to show their disgust and also get up to some crazy antics in order to try to increase the views, likes, and subscribers for their channel, as well as the Korean government unfairly discriminating against certain businesses as a result in the surge of the virus. That's all coming up right now on Fuji TV. Fuji from Fuji TV here. Now it's been a couple of days since Joe Dusun was released from prison, and upon his release and all the way until he got to his home in Ansan, pandemonium ensued, mostly caused by YouTubers. Upon leaving the police station, Joe Dusun quietly bowed to reporters and got into an unmarked vehicle in order to be escorted to his home. Now on the way to his home, when the van had stopped at a red light, presumably, two people came up to the van and started kicking the doors and the windows. Later, once we see the van approaching the home, we can see somebody jumping on top of the van, jumping up and down until police promptly had him removed. As the day went on, YouTubers and others came out of the woodworks to show their disgust towards his release back into society, while also trying to desperately get views for their channels. One man tried to break the police line set up in front of Joe Dusun's house in order to enter the building. People were loitering, People were playing music inside of their cars loudly. People were doing strange things in order to get views for their channel. There were actual fist fights as a result of uh, corona concerns. Anything you can imagine. When so many things happen at the same time, there's a term for this in Korean that I just recently learned called hell party, which essentially translates to when it rains, it pours. Of course, the day after his release was the first day of snow that Korea received and a car accident occurred right in front of his house. I too share my disgust for Cho Doo Soon. However, the people flocking to Ansan to this poor residential neighborhood in order to get views and protests and film, although it is, I am happy to see that people actually care about this issue and they, you know, it's clear that this was a disgusting crime and the public also agrees, so it's nice to see that. On the other hand, it's disturbing the residents that live there who are already going through a difficult time as a result from this monster returning to their communities. In other news this week, as the number of corona cases surge, the government is looking to implement a higher social distancing level, increasing it from 2.5 to 3. When it was raised to level 2 a couple of weeks ago, people were not allowed to sit inside cafes. They had to take their drinks to go, and all businesses had to close at 9 p.m. Last week, when the government raised the social distancing level to 2.5, other types of businesses were required to close such as educational academies, which is a absolutely massive market in Korea and has a lot of people wanting to study certain things and also employs many people in that industry, but also other types of businesses as well, such as exercise facilities like gyms, yoga centers, Pilates, etc. An increase to level three, which people are anticipating, would mean the close of large markets such as Home Plus and Emart. Surprisingly, through all this, restaurants are still allowed to operate as normal, with the exception of having to close at 9 p.m. That means people can eat at crowded restaurants without wearing a mask, including drinking as much alcohol as they want until 9 p.m. at night. This makes absolutely no sense to me. The government should have limited restaurants to takeout only when it raised it to level two, similar to cafes, or at the very least 2.5. Why is being able to drink alcohol in a crowded pub until 9 p.m. permitted, drinking alcohol lowers the immune system, while working out at gyms, which boost your immune system, all while still having to wear a mask, those are closed. I've talked to some of my friends about this and they've said that people need a place to eat. Now, if you're walking around the city around 11.30 to 1, you can see flocks of people leaving the companies in small groups going to eat re at restaurants together. They're walking around like little herds of sheep, not even talking to each other, on their phone, walking like zombies to restaurants where they can eat unhappily together and then go back to their office after stopping to get a coffee. Why can't they make lunch at home? Why can't they use a delivery app? Why can't they go to the restaurant and take it to go and just eat in front of their desk? These kinds of restrictions discriminate against certain businesses and the employees who work at those businesses. Now, people who work at cafes are getting their hours cut or the cafe is being shut down entirely because it's not okay 
to sit and drink coffee in an okay, but it's okay to drink alcohol at a bar. It absolutely makes no sense at all. Now, I'm not saying I'm against lockdowns. I'm just saying that there should be some consistency with them. If you're going to shut down the cafes, you should shut down the restaurants and shutting down everything. Well, not shutting it down. You can still take it to go. But doing these types of procedures will limit the amount of places people could go and gather together, which means that the number of virus cases will go down quicker, which means everything can open up much quicker. However, again, the government, for some reason, it seems arbitrarily are deciding which businesses can stay open and which can't. For example, during lunchtime, instead of actually sitting in the cafe, people are going to the cafe, purchasing their drink, and then going to a bookstore in order to congregate, discuss, and, you know, talk, and this is all with their mask open. I know what you might be thinking, but, you know, the cafe still got the sale. However, in this case, we're talking about there's a large a number of people that don't work but go to the cafes to study or chill for a bit. Those people are not buying coffee or not buying drinks as a result of those cafes not being able to operate. So it absolutely makes no sense to me. And, what you know, some cafes are shutting down and they can't operate until the numbers go down, but they still have to pay rent. If the government wants to shut down the cafes, why don't they also tell the landlords to wait to receive rent until the cafes can open again? And why don't we go a step further and why don't we tell the banks that the owners of the building who probably took out a loan to purchase the building shouldn't have to pay back that loan until business is open for everyone again. It seems like they're using these lockdowns to discriminate against certain businesses, usually smaller businesses, but big businesses are not going to be affected nearly as much. Again, I'm not saying no lockdowns. I'm saying that there should be some sort of consistency with all the rules and regulations that are currently being made. That's all for this video. If you didn't like it, go ahead, give it a thumbs down. If you did, thumbs up. I don't really care. Subscribe, unsubscribe. It's all good. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.